Everything we as human beings have created on this planet was essentially first created in our minds. All that you see, which is human work on this planet, first found expression in the mind, then it got manifested in the outside world. So one thing we need to understand is, the wonderful things that we have done on this planet and the horrible things that we have done on this planet, both have come from the human mind. So if we are concerned as to what we create in this world, it's extremely important that first of all we learn to create the right things in our mind, how we keep our minds. If we do not have the power to keep our minds the way we want it, what we create in the world is also going to be very accidental and haphazard. So learning to create our minds the way we want is the basis of creating the world the way we want. There is a wonderful story in the yogic lore. On a certain day, a man took a walk. He went for a long walk. Accidentally, unawares, he walked into paradise. Fortunate, isn't he? <laughs> he just took a walk and he landed up in paradise. After this long walk, he felt little tired. So he thought, oh, I am tired, I wish I could rest somewhere. He looked around, there there was a nice tree, underneath which there was very cushiony grass. So it was inviting, he went and put his head down there and slept. After a few hours he woke up, well rested and he thought, oh, I am well rested, but I am feeling hungry, I wish I had something to eat. And he thought about all the nice things that he ever wanted to eat in his life. And instantly, all those things appeared in front of him. You need to understand, they have the services like that. Hungry people don't ask questions. Food came and he ate. Stomach became full. Then he thought, oh, my stomach is full, I wish I had something to drink. All the nice things that he ever wanted to drink, he thought about it and all of them just appeared in front of him. Drinking people also don't ask questions, so he drank. Now with a little bit of alcohol in him, you know Charles Darwin told you, all of you are monkeys, your tail fell away, not me, Charles Darwin told you that you were all monkeys and your tail fell away and then you became human. Yes, definitely the tail fell away, but the monkey. In yoga, we always refer to an unestablished mind as markata, which means a monkey. Why we are referring to the mind as a monkey is, what are the qualities of a monkey? One thing about a monkey is, it's unnecessary movement. And another thing about the monkey is, if I say you're monkeying somebody, what does it mean? Imitation. Monkey and imitation have become synonymous. So these two essential qualities of a monkey are very much the qualities of an unestablished mind. Unnecessary movement, you don't have to learn it from the monkey, you can teach it to the monkey. And imitation is full-time job of the mind. So when these two qualities are on, a mind is referred to as a monkey. So this monkey became active within him. He just looked around, thought, what the hell is happening here? I asked for food, food came. I asked for drink, drink came. There must be ghosts around here and ghosts came. Oh, the ghosts have come, they're going to surround me and torture me, he thought. Immediately the ghost surrounded him and started torturing him. Then he started screaming in pain and said, Oh, they're going to kill me, and he died. Just now he said he's a fortunate being. The problem is he was sitting under a kalpa viksha or a wishing tree. He asked for food, food came. He asked for drink, drink came. He asked for ghost, ghost came. He asked for torture, torture came. He asked for death, death happened. 
Now don't go looking for these kalpa vrukshas in the forest. You can barely find a tree these days. A well-established mind, a mind which is in a state of some yukti, is referred to as a kalpa viksha. If you organize your mind to a certain level of organization, it in turn organizes the whole system. Your body, your emotion, your energies, everything gets organized in that direction. Once all these four dimensions of you, your physical body, your mind, your emotion and the fundamental life energies are organized in one direction. Once you are like this, anything that you wish happens without even lif lifting a little finger actually. It would help to assist it with activity, but even without doing any activity, you can still manifest what you want. If you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time. Right now the problem with your mind is, Every moment it is changing its direction. It is like you want to travel somewhere and every two steps if you keep changing your direction, the question of you reaching the destination is very remote unless it happens by chance. So, organizing our minds and in turn organizing the whole system and these four basic dimensions of who you are right now in one direction, if you do this, you are a kalpa vruksha yourself, anything that you wish will happen. But right now, if you look at your lives, everything that you have wished for till now, if it happens, you're finished. Everything and everybody that you have desired for, if all of that lands up in your house today, could you live with that? So if you want to become empowered, it is also important that you become responsible as to what you ask for and what you don't. Right now the world situation is just this, we are hugely empowered with technology. Today it doesn't take six, six billion people to destroy this planet. One man by pressing the wrong button can destroy the whole planet. When we are empowered like this, it's very important that our physical action, emotional action, mental action and energy actions are controlled and properly directed. If it is not so, we become destructive, self-destructive. Right now, that is our problem. The technology which is supposed to make our life beautiful and easy has become the source of all the problem that we are destroying the very basis of our life which is the planet. So what should have been a boon, we are making a curse out of it. What has brought incredible levels of comfort and convenience to us in the last hundred years or so, has also become a threat to our life simply because we are not conscious action, we are in a compulsive state of action. So organizing our minds fundamentally means moving from a compulsive state of activity to a conscious state of activity. You might have heard of people for whom they asked for something and beyond all expectations it came true to the, true for them. Generally, this happens to people who are in faith. Now, let's say you want to build a house. If you start thinking, oh, I want to build a house, to build a house I need fifty lakhs, but I have only fifty rupees in my pocket, not possible, not possible, not possible. The moment you say not possible, you are also saying I don't want it. So on one level, you are creating a desire that you want something, on another level, you are saying I don't want it. So in this conflict, it may not happen. Someone who has some faith in a god or in a temple or whatever, who is have simple-minded, faith works only for those people who are simple-minded. Thinking people, people who are too much thinking, for them it never works. A childlike person who has a simple faith in his god or his temple or whatever, he goes to the temple and says, Shiva, I want a house. I don't know how, you must make it for me. Now in his mind, there are no negative thoughts. Will it happen? Will it not happen? Is it possible? Is it not possible? These things are completely removed by this simple act of faith. Now he believes Shiva will do it for him and it will happen. So is Shiva going to come and build your house? No, I want you to understand, God will not lift his little finger for you. 
what you refer to as God is the source of creation. As a creator, he has done a phenomenal job, there's no question about it. Could you think of a better creation than this? Is it in anybody's imagination to think anything better than what is there right now? So as a creator, he has done his job wonderfully well. But if you want life to happen the way you want it, because right now, the very crux of your happiness and your well-being is this. If at all if you're unhappy, <laughs> the only and only reason why you're unhappy is life is not happening the way you think it should happen. That's all it is. So if life is not happening the way you think it should happen, you're unhappy. If life happens the way you think it should happen, you're happy. It's as simple as that. So if life has to happen the way you think it should happen, First of all, how you think, with how much focus you think, how much stability is there in your thought and how much reverberance is there in the thought process will determine whether your thought will become a reality or is it just an empty thought. Or how, how you do not create any impediments for your thought by creating negative thought process. Is something possible or not possible? is destroying humanity. What is possible and not possible is not your business, it's nature's business. Your business is just to strive for what you want.